Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to another exciting podcast interview. I'm here with Margaret Henning. She's the VP of Marketing and the Video Strategist. And today, we're going to be talking about a new rebranding, um, the power of AI to the future of video communication, and why dealers are seeing massive turnarounds when they change their sales process to have a disciplined approach to include video in all communications, especially internet leads. Margaret, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Brian. It's great to see you again. Hey, so co-video has been around for many years. Uh, many would even say the initial pioneer of mm -hmm. transforming uh, internet lead response from email to a engaging video. Let's start really from the basics. As a leader in this space, tell us about the rebrand and huh? <laughs> our dealers are going to be first to see this rebrand at the Modern Retailing Conference where you'll be speaking and yes. helping dealers uh, kind of find their way with video. So tell us about the rebrand. Yeah, thanks. We're so excited about it. We have been around for a long time. We've been around since 2004, believe it or not. Um, so we 20 year. 20 year anniversary this year. Yeah. And uh, of course, we got our start in automotive. It's always been our flagship industry and our bread and butter. Um, you know, over the course of that 20 years, we branched out. We've worked with some other industries. And believe it or not, over the last couple of years, we said, hey, we want to kind of renew our vows with the automotive industry. This is where, you know, these are the people we know, we love, we know we can make a great impact. And so part of the rebrand is, is around that, just saying, hey, we want to be all in on automotive. And I think that's going to come out in the new branding. And of course, as the VP of marketing, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, that's your project for sure. <laughs> you know, when I think um, 20 years, yeah. I remember... Um, there were a few leaders, Elise Kephart was one who was training, you know, people on the use of video, but there was a time, you know, in the early days where people said, but people don't want to see someone on camera or let alone, you know, them be on camera. Mm -hmm. And yet COVID changed the game. I was traveling a lot more. Dealers wanted face-to-face -face meetings today. Dealers are like, I don't need a face-to-face -face meeting. Let's just jump on a Zoom or a Google Meet. So video has become, almost for me, table stakes. Morgan, when you call friends, I was noticing this the other day. I almost prefer to do FaceTime um, than just a regular call. And in, in fact, when I just make a regular call, like I feel like um, kind of cheating and doing a quick <laughs> call. Um, <laughs> What about you? I mean, are you using FaceTime like when you're calling family and friends more than just say a regular voice line? All the time. Absolutely. Especially now that I'm an aunt. I have a niece and a nephew in Charleston and I'm in Indiana. And so I think it started then. Obviously, want to be a part of their lives and feel more connected to them. Um, and it really speaks to the power of video. You know, you're right. I think uh, years ago, people at first thought, hey, yeah, maybe video in my personal life. But how does that translate to the professional world? Is that weird? Is it awkward? And, you know, one of the one of the very few things that was a positive that came out of COVID was, hey, people really saw the benefit of using video, not only in their personal lives, but in their professional life. And the correlation, though, is still there. We can see, you know, we've got tone, inflection, mm -hmm. body wow. language, you know, all the stuff that you don't have when you're just talking on the phone or, you know, for us in the automotive world, when you're just writing somebody an email or a text message and, one of the things I hear from people all the time, which just makes me so happy, is I hear salespeople, folks come up to them at the dealership and they're like, oh, hey, Brian, you're the one who sent me the video. Right. And they beeline for them knowing that they've already made that connection. So, hey, they're they're losing fewer deals and they're building that connection with people right up front. And that to me is just very, very cool. Well, you know, one of the tenets of COVIDio is this uh, connection 
and transparency, right? Just being uh, a trusted platform where people can engage. You know, um, I don't do this, but my wife likes to do voice memos. Uh huh. I do you know, too. So instead of <laughs> being in, uh, you know, like real time, you know, her friends will be like, "Hey," psst, psst, and she's doing a voice memo for two or three minutes, and. And I'm like, why don't you guys just pick up the phone? It's like, well, you know, they're in between things and they're busy people. Yeah. And, you know, when I think about it, I get it because compared to email, you're missing the inflection. You're missing the passion. You're missing the storytelling. Yeah. Of course, with video, you get to know the person. And, Mm -hmm. of course, now uh, when people listen to podcasts, look, we used to do just audio podcasts. Now we're, we're doing video. Okay. And I think uh, people fall in love a little bit more with the speakers, with the storyline. Yeah. So let's talk about where the rubber meets the road. You know, I talk to some dealers uh-huh. and here's what I hear. Yeah. And I think it's okay to talk about leadership in this specific issue. But hey, Brian, I've got three or four people that are crushing it. I mean, there are top people that are using video I just can't get the other people to really get on board. My first reaction sounds like a leadership problem. How come this isn't part of your process? Meaning, you know, dealers do require people to respond in a timely manner. They Mm -hmm. um, require that the lead be read and a response is contextually relevant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, that they should pursue that person you know, with a degree of energy. It seems like video uh, checks all those boxes. Exactly. So why did they let it slide? Yeah. I mean, hey, it's it's easy for me to sit here and say, um, you just need to hold people accountable. I mean, that's truly what it comes down to. But I also want to say, hey, I understand GMs, GSMs, you know, leaders, they have you have a lot on your plate, right? This isn't the only thing you're worried about. It's sales, it's service, it's personnel, it's training, it's inventory. I mean, the list goes on and on. But I would say what you said before really um, stood out to me because it's what I hear too, is your top performers are the ones using video. Well, that's not a mistake, right? Not by an accident. Right. It's not an accident that those are your top performers. And it's the same thing I see with the dealerships I work with. Those people that are recording the most videos, getting the most views, are the ones with the highest connections, appointments set, shows, and ultimately sold on those internet leads. And I'm like, yeah, we could sit here and, and you know, kind of go back and forth on the nuances all day. But ultimately, it's a tool that's going to help your team perform better. Why not hold them accountable? Because it's doing them a favor, you know, yeah. and they're going to give you pushback, right? And say, they don't want to, they don't need it, they don't have the time. Hey, let's stop making excuses and use the things that we know work. Love it. Love it. You know, let's talk about that. Um, you and I over the years have highlighted, uh, stores that have underperformed new general manager comes in, maybe they have a more modern mindset on lead response. They're all in on video and in a short period of time, a store that was struggling starts to flourish. Um, do you have any thoughts about, you know, customers of yours that have had some of these turnaround stories or some anecdotal evidence because, you know, for dealers today who are like, hey, my store can't do that or I tried and it's failed. Right. Tell me some success stories that may, well, encourage them to get back in mm-hmm. to making this a standard process. Yeah, I'd be happy to. And I've got more than just anecdotal, actually, even though I love to hear those. I love to hear the stories about how people are winning and the great um, uh, responses that they're getting from customers. But I've been working on some case studies here recently that just have been so exciting. Um, One particular dealership, a CDJR dealership out in the D.C. area, um, and had a new GM come in, had used video with us very successfully at another store. It's one of the reasons he was recruited to come into this new dealership and help him turn it around. Reached out to me and said, hey, Margaret, we got to get co-video up and running. It's one of my first order of business. So we said, yep, let's do it. 
they went from closing 6% of their internet leads to 11.3% of their internet leads in a month. In one month. Yeah. And and when dealers today are telling me, Brian, it's a tough economic climate out there. Affordability is an issue. Yes, 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 yes. These are all true. And there's a whole laundry list. Okay. They're also going to say, my floor pine costs are killing me. I have too many cars on the ground. And yet, mm-hmm. you go through and say, okay, let's do, uh, we can't control the economy. You can't control interest rates. You can't okay. control inventory that the OEMs have or don't have. So let's talk about things you can control. Yes. When people reach out to you, are you doing the best job? You know. When you're doing your marketing, are you using smart data? Are you contacting your existing customers who've already done business? And it's so funny. When I do my like five basic checklists, they'll be like, "Eh, I'm not giving myself an A there. I'm not giving myself an A there. I'm not giving my... I'm like, okay, well, if we just focus on these small areas... We could have a big impact and doubling the close rate. Now, granted, 6% was a failing store. It was, yeah. But in 30 days, it just shows you mm-hmm. leadership and technology that creates a personalized, memorable experience, creates trust earlier, clarity, relationship. Yep. Hey, when there's so many choices in the DC area, exactly. Hey, wouldn't a consumer probably respond to the person who seemed to be more fun and personal and modern? Yeah, exactly. Well, and you know, I don't want to downplay all the challenges out there because they're, like you said, there's a whole laundry list of them. Um, but I like to tell people because oftentimes I'll hear, I need more leads, more leads, more leads, more leads. And I'm like, okay, do we need more leads or do we need to do a better job converting the leads that we have? Right. Yeah. Like, Are we taking care of them? Because that's a massive investment on those internet leads, right? So if we're not doing everything that we can to give them a great experience and convert them, we're lighting that money on fire. And no, we can't, we can't be doing that over and over. It's not sustainable. And I understand that for dealerships, hey, when things are, you know, they're really battening down the hatches, the tendency is to not spend. And I know that sometimes you have to be a little counterintuitive to say, okay, what kind of smart investments can we make that are going to help us with that low hanging fruit and really make up some ground in a meaningful way? Well, you know, and and those aren't easy choices to make, right? I'm not saying, hey, this is the time to just go go bananas and spend like crazy. We have to be smart about it, Um, you know, but I would I would um, caution leaders from pulling back entirely because that's no way to grow and improve to cut your team off at their knees and not give them any tools to succeed. You know, when we talk about benchmarks and you mentioned this uh, great example, um, <laughs> I've written about it. You and I have talked about it. The four by 60 rule, right? If you lead yeah. 60%, you have two way engagement of those 60%. You book an appointment, you hope 60% of those show, and when they arrive, 60% close. That gives you a 13% lead to sale ratio. And when you study this, it's that first section, that first step that's so important because you can't recover if you have a 30% engagement rate. You can't recover from that. It never, if you overachieve in the first step, getting that two-way engagement and say, look, no, Brian, we're getting 75%. Man, that gives you a lot of grace to get above 13, uh, depending on other potential issues. So it's all about getting that initial response and engagement. How do you see video really differentiating so that first step isn't four by 60, but it's really maybe 75, 70, 65, 45, you know, and you, and you still beat 13%. 
Yeah, exactly. As the kids say, the math isn't math. And, you know, like if you're up there and you're not making those strong contact rates at 60, 70, 80 percent, you know, closing at 13 is just never going to happen. Right. Or at least, you know, the number of, of vehicles you want out of it isn't going to happen. So certainly not waiting until people come in to put your best foot forward. Right. I hear so many people say, get them in front of me. I'm great in person, you know, old school, new school, all kinds of people will say that. And I think that it's true that oftentimes as salespeople, we're engaging, we're thoughtful, we love to work with people, but why cut yourself off and not connect with people in a meaningful way right from the beginning? Come on, that's exactly true. And, you know, I was thinking as AI has been bantered around, you can't have a conversation uh, listen to the news, especially business news without AI. I saw an amazing example. We were on the Automotive Innovators Tour and a company called Rocket, um, who does training videos, took uh, a couple minutes of video of Gray Scott just answering some basic questions. How's the weather? Where do you like to vacation? Blah, blah, blah. And then... The AI took all of those angles, face movements, and you could type in a story. Hi, you know, my name is Grace Scott and I like to climb rocks. And uh, hey, uh, I really, here's a funny joke. And they just typed in some text. And all of a sudden this video, and it, it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, I mean, close uh, to awesome. And I said, I wonder if the future... Mm -hmm. generate auto responses. But if the person felt a little uncomfortable initially on video, that they could write their response, push it in, and then the video would be created based on the text that the person wanted to say. Almost like maybe if somebody had a stutter or maybe somebody really felt like, hey, you know, uh, I get nervous. Uh -huh. uh, what do you think AI and video gen uh -huh. could make more uh, sales associates comfortable with pushing out an aha uh -huh first experience. Yeah. Oh, I love that. The aha. Uh -huh. I certainly see that or at least a version of that as being the future at some point. The questions for me, and this is something that CoVideo is thinking a lot about. To be fair, we're taking it slow and being really thoughtful about AI. You know, I think AI is incredible. It is going to allow us to do a lot of amazing things. But I think we also need to be super thoughtful about how we're using it for our people, for our customers. You know, how we don't want to have this bait and switch experience for them. We want to be authentic and have that connection there. Not to say that that won't be a part of it eventually. The questions for me are, you know, are we being genuine? Uh, what does the scalability look like around that? And then eventually the affordability around it as well. Certainly as technology gets better, it's going to become more affordable. So I don't know. I think it's going to be really exciting to see where it goes. Well, uh, so am I. I, I uh, was blown away on how quick the AI could learn facial expressions, you know, to create yeah. a deep fake. I was going to say, essentially, right? fake. yeah. Um, the team at CoVideo has always sponsored dealer education. You've been out on the forefront educating dealers on how to evolve their sales process with a more modern feel. And uh, once again, you'll be sponsoring dealership education at the Modern Retailing Conference. When you think of Palm Beach in November and the yeah. dealers coming there. What are you most excited to talk to dealers about? What 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 do you want dealers to come up to you and challenge you with? Or mm -hmm. what would you like to challenge dealers with? What's top of mind for you now? Yeah, I love that question. A couple of things. So one thing I would like to challenge dealers with is one, you know, a really hitting home that video is table stakes and not a sort of like fluff or nice to have tool. I think sometimes people hear video and they've heard it over and over at conferences and, you know, in podcasts like ours and all that sort of thing. But they sort of think, hey, it's sort of this fluffy thing. No, 
It is something that gives you real results and very quickly. So I want people to understand that. And we help people break it down actually using your four by six year old where we'll look at every conversion point and based on maybe where they're struggling, we'll say, hey, let's use video right here at this conversion point. Uh, let's hear work. Smart. Telling people a, a video appointment reminders if you're having a hard time with your show rate or up at the top if you're having a hard time, you know, setting those appointments. So we can get really thoughtful and methodical about it. So that's one thing. And I would also then um, encourage them or challenge them to think about, do you have a clear process and are you holding your team accountable? That clarity is really important. Because if you don't say we're using video in this way, this way, this way, right? Maybe it's one way, maybe it's three ways, whatever those are for your specific store. If you just hand over a tool, whether it's video or anything and say, use it, guess what? Not going to happen. We've got to have clarity, consistency, and the same way that you're holding their feet to the fire on phone calls, text messages, setting those appointments, follow-ups. Video should absolutely be a part of that accountability as well. And let me reframe it then uh, for general managers, general leaders who are still not sold that it has to be part of the process. Mm. What if I reframed it this way? You have millions of dollars of inventory sitting on the lot. You're paying tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars a year on floor planning costs. Mm. To be the most efficient operator and the most profitable, it's proven that added video in your lead response and in your sales process improves close rates and market share. It's proven. It's not yeah. a guess. So why wouldn't you pivot and just say, for me to be the most profitable dealer, the best that I can be, to do the most with the money that the owner has entrusted me to manage what? the most efficiently, I'm just going to require my people to include a personalized, contextually relevant, engaging video in every lead response. It's just the way we do business. And if yeah. someone doesn't want to do business, well, then, you know what? They're basically saying they don't want to help you become as profitable as you can be. If you reframe it, it makes a lot of sense to say, hey, these are the tools that will help me reduce my cost to be more profitable to be um, a leader and to grow my market share. So it's kind of tough for me when somebody says, hey, I'm not hitting my numbers and yet don't want to follow a proven playbook. Um, yeah. when we think about getting started, Margaret. Um, let's say that a general manager just said, you're right, Brian, uh -huh. no more excuses. I'm going to give CoVideo a call. How long does it take for people to kind of get comfortable? What's the benchmark? Is it, hey, over 30 days, people kind of hit their pace and then start mm -hmm. benchmarking? What What's a good, you yeah, know, yeah. great question on -ramp for them? It's going to depend on people's comfort level and if they've used a video or not, right? I see some people pick it up and immediately they can start making an impact at their store. Other people who haven't used it before, I will be I will be the first to tell you that like any new skill building, right? The first time, you know, we cold call, the first time we, you know, are, are right there with someone in person, feels a little bit uncomfortable, takes a little bit of practice, like any good skill that we're building, videos the same way, right? So I don't really see it as a time frame, like two weeks or a month. It's more about getting your reps in, kind of like going to the gym, right? So if I see people getting their reps in, and I would say that's probably anywhere from 10 to 15 videos. After you've made 10 to 15 videos and sent those out, you're going to start to feel your flow where you're not so tied up with, hey, how am I saying this? How do I look? Did I stutter? Guess what? It really doesn't matter all that much. And I know people say, no, it has to be perfect. We're not trying to go for perfect here, right? These aren't commercials. It's like a video voicemail. We're cool just being ourselves. So that might take somebody three days, you know, depending upon how many leads they're getting. It might take somebody 30 days, but I would say usually 10 to 15 videos and then they start to get in their groove. Love it. Love it. And, you know, 
I want to say that even, you know, with the podcast, when we used to do audio, I said, let's do video. And I was like, hey, I travel a lot. And I just said, listen, people want to listen to the podcast because of the content, whether I have green curtains because I'm in Florida or a brick wall because I'm in Italy. It doesn't make a difference. Don't get so hung up about the perfect studio. People want authenticity. They want information. They want to learn. And maybe this podcast in itself is encouragement to say, hey, it doesn't have to be perfect, but it's a great way for people to lean in, listen in. Yeah, if you're driving in the car, audio is fine. But if you're sitting in your desk and you really want to lean in, you know, the whole video experience is, is much better. We know that from video training. Mm -hmm. um, let's talk about dealers who want to take action. What's the best mm -hmm. way for them to get a demo of the platform? Because, it, you know, being on the market now 20 years, and congratulations on that accomplishment, Thank the you. platform has evolved. The integrations with CRMs have evolved. So what's the best way for a dealer to get a demo of the latest platform, including all the integrations? Yeah, I would go to covideo.com and say, hey, I want to request a demo. You can do it right there, put in your information, and then one of our experts will reach out to you and they'll ask you all those questions. Hey, what uh, what CRM are you on? What inventory management are you using? You know, what's your guys' flow look like? Because one thing that's really important to us, and we talked about this last time, actually, in Modern Retailing, is being a partner over a vendor. And mm -hmm. it makes such a difference. And we really pride ourselves on this, where we want to make sure we're not just a piece of software that we're handing over to somebody and saying, good luck. We're here to make sure that you are wielding that in the most appropriate way, strategizing with you, getting the most out of it and making it as seamless as possible for you, your team and your tools. That is great. And, you know, one thing that might be helpful is, um, you know, when you come to MRC, maybe you have a kind of a little reel of some of the best videos that your customers have set up. Because I think also dealers need to see what's possible, what's the high bar. So consider that because I think uh, dealers would like to show, you know, their team, hey, look, look, listen to these responses. These are people who got comfortable with video. Look how great they sound. So let's um, put that as a bookmark. You know, for the dealers who are listening in, this is a interview with one of our sponsors, but we have a whole series uh, leading up to the Modern Retailing Conference, which is November 17, 18, 19, in the beautiful O Hotel in Palm Beach, Florida. It's a beautiful time of the year. And um, well, it's a conference where the thought leaders come together and really engage, um, not the basic conversations, but where is the industry going? How do we improve the customer experience? How do we do more with the leads that we have, just as you mentioned, and how do we do more to generate uh, additional opportunities? And this is the theme of the conference this year. And I can't wait to see the new rebrand. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> and so I, I bet there's some new swag coming. Is that true? Are we gonna there's going to be some new swag. Yes. And, okay. I, you know, I got to give you props too, Brian, because we were at MRC last year. First of all, had a fantastic time. It is a wonderful place to be in November. And really, like you said, the caliber of the conversations that are happening, both on stages and off, are really unmatched. I mean, we were really blown away at how thoughtful, inquisitive, uh, forward thinking people are, not just the vendors, of course, but the dealers as well. And it was this really lovely collaborative experience where everyone was putting their heads together and we left feeling super energized. So we're excited to do it again in November. Well, that is the feedback. It's a great intimate event. Um, it is the place to learn and to bring back new ideas. So thanks for supporting dealer education. And I want to remind dealers that the event sells out every year. So it's not a matter of me pushing your attendance, but you should want to go, especially if you're looking to elevate the customer experience, do more with your first party data, do a better job at your job, <laughs> uh, which is maximizing the return on investment that your dealer principal or your dealer group have set before you to help you sell more cars in the digital age and video is front and center. 
And we'll see how that plays out with AI in the future. Oh, listen, I want to thank you for being on the podcast again. Thank you for your energy. I always love talking with you, Maria, because I'm like, <laughs> likewise. she is um, really <laughs> just a pleasure. Thanks for your uh, commitment to automotive retail and uh, congratulations on your 20 year anniversary. Um, for all the dealers who are listening in, join us at the Modern Retailing Conference in November. Until then, go to covideo.com, get a demo, see how video can transform your closing rates, your engagement, move inventory, and lower your operating costs. Makes sense in this economic environment. Thanks for listening in. Margaret, thanks again. We'll see you next time on another podcast interview.